Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. On this special season of Washington Grown, we're following Washington produce around the world. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, there's just stuff happening everywhere. Breakfast, Breakfast lunch, lunch, or dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm doing yeah. all, all the work over here. <laughs> That's a Tomas Deluxe. All good things are better shared, right? Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> I can't even walk. <laughs> we got a lot to explore and a lot to do, so let's get to it. <laughs> to Washington. To Washington. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordon and welcome to Washington Grown. Every step of the way, our farmers are taking great care to make sure our produce is grown safely and sustainably. In this episode, we're going to learn how Washington's high quality standards make our food the best in the world. Val's helping out at High Up Hair Growers. There's so much pressure. How do they go so fast? And I'm making a special Indian dish called Dal Mak Ni at Mango Tree in Spokane. And that's the best smell in the world, butter and garlic. <laughs> Plus, we're learning how Washington products are being sold overseas. We're feeding the world in the United States from Washington State. All this and more today on Washington Grown. Looking to try some great Indian cuisine but not sure where to start? Then Mango Tree is the perfect place for you. This Spokane restaurant is serving up traditional Indian flavors in a delicious and approachable way. The food is delicious, it's fresh. It has a lot of flavor. Highly recommend. It was delicious. What is it do you think that people love about the Mango Tree? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. We twisted a little bit on the traditional style dishes. Hilary Yardo is an operating partner with Mango Tree. She wants to make sure every guest loves the menu, whether they're experienced with Indian cuisine or they've never tried anything like it. At first, some people are kind of scared, thinking like they've never had it, the food is phenomenal. Yeah. We're lucky enough to have amazing chefs from India. The way we do some of the things is a little bit different, but it works really well for this area and the clientele basis yeah. that we have here. It's just yeah. so good. Oh, eventually we'll probably end up trying them all. You don't want to miss later in the show when Mango Tree's chef Rahul and I make a special dish called Dal Makhni. What was this again? Uh, it's a kitchen king. It's an Indian spice. We use all in the kitchens. Yeah. yeah. That's why it's, it's named the kitchen king. king. Yes. <laughs> I love it's, uh, it. It's When you think of Washington grown produce, you're probably thinking about our famous potatoes, berries, or apples. But there's a special and delicious fruit that Washington grows that you may be forgetting. Pears often get overlooked. It's been a staple in households for a, a long time. Sean Cox is the general manager of Peshastan High Up Growers. Here in the Wenatchee area, all the right conditions combine to grow this sweet and juicy fruit. At High Up, they believe that Washington pears are worth all the hype. The younger generations that are coming in, they are excited about pears. You know, pears are something new. Even though it's been around for hundreds of years, it's something new and they're excited to try pears. I think that there's enough pear varieties out there um, from the beginning till the end that you can find a pear that you like. There's a lot of different tastes and flavors and textures. Um, so try a pear. So right here we have Golden Russet Bosque, a Green Angel, and a Red Angel. The red and green are very similar. But this one is a little bit more, I would say, uh, Tart? Uh, aromatic, and this one's more sweet. Okay. Uh, but the Bosque is really uniquely different. This one has kind of a spicy, crunchy uh, flavor. That's amazing. Once the pears are brought in from the field, they're sent to the packing shed. So today's actually the first day that we are packing anjos. So right after the pears are sorted, they get weighed and then they get a sticker put on them. Okay. You see what we call a PLU, but it is actually a sticker on the pear. That tells what uh, size the pear is. And also it's a scannable at the supermarkets. Okay. So my big question, are these stickers edible? They are food safe, but I wouldn't eat them. Okay. <laughs> 
After the pears have been given a sticker, they're separated by size and sent to be hand packed. Sean even let me try packing a box. So I want to make sure that the pears are facing all the same ways. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, you can kind of see how the shape is okay. pear shaped. Oh my gosh, I'm so slow. How do they go so fast? Many, many years of experience. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, so this goes here. And then one more tray. And then one more tray. And you're There's good. There's so much pressure. Put, put one more pad on One top. more pad on, okay. And you fold this and in. Then, oh my gosh. Back it up like a nice little present. All right. Some consumers will enjoy. Okay. Yeah. All right, you did her great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got my heart rate up. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe how fast these women are. It is really incredible. Now, over here, they're wrapping the pears. Yes. Tell me about that. So this wrap pack is our standard export pack. This fruit will actually be opened up in uh, March. We'll be putting all these fruit into CA storage, basically putting those pears to sleep, and then we'll be bringing them out and selling them all year round. So another unique thing about Anjo is it stores really well in storage. So Bartlett's, you know, the, the season is basically August through uh, February, but an Anjo we can actually keep in storage if we wrap it and taste really good the whole year. Chilly it is here. chilly in here. So this is segregation and shipping. And so it's 30 degrees in here right now. We <laughs> want to treat the fruit right. So 30 degrees, that's 30, the 30 temperature degrees. that it's a, little cold. a pear needs, right? It is, it is. <laughs> that's the perfect temperature. So when they leave from here, they'll get on a truck. And if they're, okay. go if they're going on export to Mexico, they'll just stay on a truck all the way into Mexico. If they're going overseas to Vietnam or Israel or the Middle East anywhere, they'll actually go on a container over in the port of Seattle, and then they'll get put on a boat. It's amazing, really, to think of all of the, the labor and everything that goes into both in the orchard and then at the packing house. Every pear is picked by one person's hand, every pear is packed by one person's hand, and there's so many hands that are involved. And to know that that high quality, that's high up pear is enjoyed around the world, it makes you happy that you're doing business. More than 3,000 pear varieties are grown around the world. How many are grown in Washington State? I'll have the answer after the break. Coming up, I'm making a special Indian dish called Dal Makhni at Mango Tree in Spokane. And that's the best smell in the world, butter and garlic. And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest, trying Chef Laurent's Mom's Lentil Salad. We grow around 10 different varieties of pears in Washington State. This is a Bosque and this is an Anjo, a couple of those varieties. We're back at Mango Tree in Spokane. With over five locations in the Northwest, there's no excuse for anyone to miss out on the amazing Indian flavors this place is creating. It's good for people to experience different cultures. You can tell it's spicy, but it's a flavor hot, not a, well, now I can't taste my food hot. Highly recommend. It was delicious. Most people either come in and they know exactly what they want, they have no questions, they know, or they come in kind of clueless and then we get to kind of help guide them through their experience here. Yeah, it's like, what is good here? Yes. Everything. <laughs> it is, it's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> Operating partner Hilary Yarno knows that the secret to mango tree success lies in fresh, local ingredients. And with Indian food relying so heavily on lentils and other legumes, the Northwest is the perfect spot for everything they need to make a delicious meal. We use so much onions. We use onions in everything, everything. yes. And potatoes, we use a ton of that. Mm -hmm. uh, cilantro, kind of the majority of our bases yeah. come from that. The food is delicious, it's fresh. It has a lot of flavor. It's just yeah. so good. So I get to cook with one of your chefs today, right? Yes. What are we gonna make? Um, you're going to be making dal makhni, which is a cream-based curry, super good, rich, flavorful. And you'll be working with my chef, Raul, who's amazing. Awesome. Today we are going to make a dal makhni. Okay. It's a traditional Indian dish, came from the Punjab province. It's a rich and tasty and creamy. Ooh, so, I like that. Yeah. I, this is all beautiful and colorful. Yes. What was this again? Uh, it's a kitchen king. It's an Indian spice. We use all the in the kitchens. Yeah. yeah. That's why its, it's name is the Kitchen King. king. Yes. <laughs> I it's love the... it. So we have mm -hmm. our awesome legumes from the Palouse, which mm -hmm. is our backyard, which I yeah. love. All of those get cooked down yes. into this yes. with some spices. That will be the reason. This? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, 
Ooh, that smells good. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that takes a long time, right? How yeah, long? Yeah, it will take uh, at least one to two hours for the boiling and uh, at least ten minutes with the simmering. I see. Just slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. So lots of patience and love goes yes. into this. Yes. You have to wait and watch, and uh, you have to take care of your dal. Those mm. are very important. <laughs> yes, these are the base. <laughs> this yeah. is the base. We start by heating up some butter with garlic and ginger. In Hindi, we call the butter makhan. Okay. Yeah, that's why the name came from the dal makhani. Yeah. So it's the combined of the dal and butter. Yeah. Perfect. And that's the best smell in the world. Yeah. Butter and garlic. <laughs> and ginger as well. Next, we add the lentils that have been cooked down into dal. Then we add some tomato paste, salt, our kitchen king spice, some coriander, cumin seed powder, fenugreek, a special chili paste for color, and finish it all off with some cream. Then we can put more butter. As I told you, it's more combination. More butter. Yes, it's a combination <laughs> of butter and dal. Yeah, and that's why we like it. Yeah. Now it's cooked, it's bubbling now, it means it's cooked already. Yeah, yeah you did it great, yeah? <laughs> so we have <laughs> Thank the you. final product is ready. Ta-da! Yeah. So we have some garlic naan. Yes. And it's time to taste. Yes, of course. All right. Okay. It's rich and hearty. Yes. It's because, like comfort food. Yeah, because I told you that combination of the dal and the butter, yeah? Lots of layers of spices that I yes, like. Yes, we use Indian spices swarm from the inside. You will not feel spicy in the mouth. You will feel from the inside. Yeah. It's hot like. Right. Yes. It's like warm here. Yes. But not in my mouth. Not. The lentils and the chickpeas. Yes. So delicious. I'm going to have so? some more. Yes, of course. Mm. It's all yours now. It's all mine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to get the recipe for Mango Tree's Dal Makhni, visit us at wagrone.com. We grow so much amazing food here in Washington that we need to figure out what to do with it all. That's why today, Tomas and I are learning about international exports. Ryan Hamm manages the International Marketing Department at the Washington State Department of Agriculture. She works with Washington companies to export their goods into other countries. Buying local is very important and we definitely support that at the Department of Agriculture. But we also realize and recognize that exports are also critical to Washington's economy. We figure about 30% of our agricultural products are exported. At the Washington State Department of Agriculture, we have an international marketing program, um, and the sole focus is on helping Washington agriculture companies export their products overseas. Okay. We provide um, education on exporting, training. We give a lot of guidance and hand-holding to help companies sort of get started. We employ foreign trade representatives in numerous countries. My name is Marco Albarran. I'm the in-country representative for Washington State Department of Agriculture. Here in Mexico City, Marco works closely with Washington to make sure our products like apples, potatoes, and cherries get into the hands of Mexican consumers. As it turns out, Marco's connection with Washington State goes back a long time. Washington State is very per is very personal for me because I was ex an exchange student in Eastern Washington. You were. When I was a kid, so that's how I got to learn English. Yeah. And uh, that's how I've been going back and forth Mexico and Washington for more than 35 years. Yeah. The relationship between Mexico and the U.S. is is very close. You know, trade culture. We've been 200 years living together, you know, yeah. with our ups and downs, but we are neighbors with good friends. And I know that there's a lot of people in Washington State that actually grow these products that are very fond of Mexico, mm -hmm. or they even have their origins in Mexico. So to yeah. them, it's yeah. like, you know, thank you because you're doing a great job and we're taking good care of your products here too. Right. We see more combination of products going from the traditional Mexican dishes to more international and also mixing this so you can have a fish with fruit yeah. uh, or you can have a dessert that has salty items. Mm -hmm. We have more of our identity but also we are looking for new things. You're so experimenting. It's, exactly, so yeah. it's not only the US or the Mexican, so it's all you know, modern uh, food and modern yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. We always treat Washington as a guest mm -hmm. to the country. We want to be partners uh, in a long term. I want people to, to live what I lived when I was a kid. 
Across the world in Asia, one market looks a little different than Mexico, but it's just as big of a fan of Washington products. I love Vietnam because I came here when this country had nothing. Francis Lee is the WSDA representative here in Ho Chi Minh City. He's seen firsthand how the country has grown, allowing its people to buy more products from places like Washington. This is the future for Washington State uh, agriculture product coming into a uh, growing middle class uh, country uh, where people are looking for premium, where people are looking for food safety and Washington State can do it all. Every time I go back to uh, Washington State, I always tell all the companies, all the growers, come and see for yourself how dynamic this market is, that you can sell what you grow on the ground or what you pack uh, in the factory to bring it to Vietnam and show it to the, to the uh, Vietnamese consumer. We're feeding the world in the United States and in, from Washington state. Not every country has the food security that we have. And so we're providing a lot of the food that's going to these international customers. So it's very important. And it's something that we're all proud of. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> we are. Coming up, Tomas is trying out a special Thai food truck called Thai You Up. We gotta learn more, right? right it can't right. just be burgers and fries all the exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> You're really bored of the same food. <laughs> Here in Seattle, there's no shortage of different foods to try from all sorts of cultures. Today, I'm checking out a highly recommended food truck called Tie You Up. Owner Teddy Sasanto and his wife have worked tirelessly to create some amazing Thai dishes. But there's just one thing that confuses me. I understand uh, you're Indonesian. Yes. And this is a Thai truck. Thai truck, So what yes. gives? Uh, my wife is Thai. <laughs> <laughs> now oh, that makes the sense. That so makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Every time we have catering, people call back to her, thank you, it's wonderful, the food was delicious. She's really happy, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> she worked harder than me. I can tell she got that, that satisfaction from, right. from the feedback. You've got these incredible dishes that we're yeah. holding here. This one. Why don't you tell me what we got? This is one of our uh, customer favorite. Okay. This is a uh, holy basil chicken over rice with fried egg. Okay, very yeah. nice. Now, this has got a couple of Washington vegetables in there, right? Yes, this is bell pepper. Bell peppers. Basil. Basil. Some green bean. Okay, well, let's try it out here. Okay, we're gonna get some peppers, some basil. One bite, I'm gonna need like a couple bites. This is great. One thing already that I, I really like about this dish is it's, it's pretty simple. Comfort food for Thai. Right. Well, as long as you guys are roaming around in this truck, there's gonna be a great Thai place to go and eat, man. Nice, thank this you. Is delicious. Thank you, thank enjoy. You. <laughs> Let's see what people think about the Holy Basil Thai Bowl. You can definitely taste the basil. I love basil. Fresh basil is the best. The bell pepper is really fresh and has a nice crunch to it. It's good. It's not too sweet, not too salty. It's a good balance of flavor. That fresh taste of basil kind of reminds me of summertime. It really has a unique flavor. Yeah. Are you a heat person? Do you like heat? I like a little heat, yeah. Like yeah. a little. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that's Not good. too much. I heard you order back there. Yeah. You were like, give me five out of five. five. Yeah. You want it to burn. I like it. <laughs> I want to feel it. But this is a nice dish for, you know, an evening out, sitting on the patio, maybe with a little glass of wine. Fresh, earthy, has a little spice to it. Perfect. <laughs> we gotta learn more, right? Right. It can't yeah. just be burgers and fries all the exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> You're really bored of the same food. <laughs> Fresh vegetables make a huge difference, I think. So eat your vegetables. <laughs> Down here in Orlando, Florida, the Global Produce and Floral Trade Show is bringing together all sorts of incredible products from around the country. Everyone is bringing their A-game to the table, but can they really compete with the amazing produce grown in Washington State? Let's find out. My name is Brandy Tucker. I am the Director of Marketing for the Washington State Potato Commission. Brandy and her team work day in and day out to make sure that Washington potatoes are not only perfect for customers here, but across the ocean as well. We have the best soil. We've got great temperatures in Washington, so we've got uh, nice uh, growing seasons in Washington State. We actually have some of the best potatoes in Washington, and again, those specialty potatoes. Folks are looking for those reds, those yellows. Right. The and purple. Then, yeah, the purples and the french fries. We export more french fries than any other state in the nation. But how do other countries know that our products are safe and ready for their consumers? 
That's where Ryan Hamm and her team at the Washington State Department of Agriculture come in. How do our international customers know that they're getting a top-notch product? We have a very robust inspection process. The Washington State Department of Agriculture is a neutral third party providing these inspections for, on behalf of companies, okay. on behalf of industry, and that's very important for foreign customers and governments to know that they can trust that the products are free from pests, diseases, meeting other requirements. Every foreign country has you know, their own requirements that have to be met. Right. And so these inspectors are, are vouching for that. They're, they're certifying yeah. that the products meet those standards. All the way on the other side of the world in Vietnam, Christy ran into a familiar face. Derek Sanderson is the director of the WSDA, so he knows firsthand how important food safety is to nations all over the world. We do everything from managing pests to doing the phytosanitary inspections on fruit in particular, but other products that come out of Washington and, and are bound for export. Phytosanitary, it's, it's looking at ensuring safety and, and uh, good quality of the product. We're naturally competitive because a lot of our products are viewed here as being um, high quality and, and, and also safe. Washington has a reputation. People know Washington, yeah. but then when they get to see the product, they get to taste the product, they know that it's legitimate. Washington products are high quality, and, um, and there's a reason they have that reputation. Like I said, we grow and best here in Washington. They love to see our products coming in. We're feeding the world in the United States and in, from Washington State. Not every country has the food security that we have. And so we're providing a lot of the food that's going to these international customers. So it's very important. And it's something that we're all proud of. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> we are. We are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane where we get to taste some wonderful food. And my tasters, superstars, <laughs> Chef Laurent Zarati over here, and my co-host Tomas Guzman over here. Here we are again. Thank you for being here. Yeah, we, this is one of our favorite things that we get to do is yeah, sure. uh, taste. And this time, we get to taste some recipes that are developed by Chef Laurent. Yes, so thank yes, you. Definitely. Was yes. that fun? It was great to have uh, all those uh, recipes, all those 14 episodes, and uh, and to try to find the right recipe for, for the show. Yeah. So that was very and fun. And you have some great Washington-grown food to work with. Exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but now we have to be careful because the person who developed the recipes is sitting right here. Yes. So. <laughs> If you don't like it, <laughs> be polite. You know, be polite. Okay. One of the things I love about the food that is grown here in Washington is that there is a lot of love put in not only to growing our food, but also once you know it's harvested and it ends up going out to the consumer, you can be sure that that is the best of that product you know, that you're going to get. Especially this episode with legumes, yeah. the lentils. Yeah. Big grower yeah. right here in the south of Spokane, the Palouse. The Palouse yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. The oh, the quality of lentils is unbelievable. Yes. The chickpeas and everything yeah. that we and get. So, exactly. your recipe Fantastic. today? So, is... Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to maybe shed a tear because it's my mom's <laughs> recipe. Oh, and I she, love she that. passed uh, mm -hmm. not long ago. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's all those memories. You have uh, those flavors, those smells that reminds mm -hmm. you of the past. Mm -hmm things that you cherish, people you loved. And, and this is a recipe of, a, of, a, of my mom. Uh, she did uh, only one vinaigrette. We didn't have ranch, we didn't have Caesar, <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't have that array yeah. of, uh, of yeah. variety that you, uh, you have uh, when you open a, an American fridge, right? Uh, only one vinaigrette and you can use it for any salad you want. I like the yeah. simplicity yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very, very I can't wait okay, to well, try this. Yes. So let's first see how uh, we make uh, Chef Laurent's mother's uh, lentils here. All right.
Yes, right. it looks beautiful and it yes. smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Like with any lentil recipe, it's hearty. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Very filling. I mean, look, there's not very much on our plate, but that's gonna do it for you. It's a meal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's a great source of protein, yeah. mm -hmm. which is good for you, you know. Uh, I, I like more, more dressing because we used to have overdressed uh, salad. So I like a lot of dressing. She, she used a lot of shallots. As you shallots. can tell, there's a lot of shallots yeah. in that recipe that are raw. So a little crunchy. Yeah, uh, you have I like that, that strength. Oh, yeah. it's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Lots of this is parsley. so good. Mm -hmm. I love the, the nutty flavor of the lentils. My parents really didn't introduce a lot of lentils in my life when Beans. growing up. They're so good. But they're so tasty. They are. Yeah. And, they are, and again, they're good for you. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing You're very this special welcome. Yes, recipe. I'm, I'm back to my childhood. Yes, right now. and thank <laughs> you, know? you to your mother yep. for making this. Yes. We love it. Yep. And, and yep. you can give it a try. This is only available on yeah. wagrown.com. So it's a special recipe. And yeah, we'd love it if you tried it. To get the recipe for Chef Laurent Zerati's Mom's Lentil Salad, visit us at wagrown.com. From the fields right here in the Evergreen State to your plate, our Washington farmers are making sure our food is the best. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time.